Alex. Who else we got in here? We got Don. We got Guy. We got Raul, Rosa, Yasmin. Hello, everybody. Right, number fifty-seven. He's just walked in the walked in the house. Number fifty-seven <laughs> in the house, baby. All right, and none of you can see me, but you can hear me. So, how are we going to solve this? All right, we are live on YouTube. Yeah, virtual. this is exciting. I want to say uh, thank you. Uh, let me see if I can share my screen because we have a lot to go over today. All right, let me share my screen. There we are. And uh, there we are on YouTube. Okay. And, and we are looking at all kinds of stuff here. Let me go ahead and start my presentation. And of course, I always put the wrong screen up just for funsies. There we are. Okay, folks. I'm super excited. Let's just get started. We are talking about today credit banking and the search for the lost American dream. I love this each and every week that we come to you and we really break down this, uh, what can be a kind of complex strategy and we take it into smaller bite-sized pieces that make it more uh, digestible. But we've been talking a lot about this and today is a super exciting, I call it like the capstone of when credit banking, it goes, when, when you just take it to the next level. So. First of all, let's get the disclaimers out of the way, Mr. Fleming. I'm not a licensed attorney, accountant, financial advisor, any of a broker, or licensed individual, even if I have a license, I act in that capacity. Therefore, will not discuss, provide, provide any specific any counsel, advice, instruction that would apply to specific individuals. This presentation intended for general information only. Why, as guys and ties, we recommend you always do your due diligence and consult the proper professionals. Now, we have all those professionals on our team, but when we're doing these presentations, we're not necessarily working on your specific situation. Great job, Mr. Fleming. We love disclaimers. Um, first of all, you should know my name is Joseph Smith, and this is Ray Fleming. We are the wise guys and ties. Wise in the ways of helping you understand credit banking and how to eliminate your debt and achieve your, your financial freedom. We have a brand new credit banking book. You know, this is, uh, this is the everything that you need to know about personal finance, about the, the credit banking strategy, about business credit intermixed with um, your personal debt pay down, everything that we ever talk about put into a systematic form, brought to you by the master money guy himself, Mr. Joseph Smith. And you may be here for the first time, you might wondering like, hey, what is credit banking? Well, credit banking utilizes your budget surplus and revolving lines of credit to transform highly expensive amortized loan interest into a simpler and less expensive um, amortized or uh, repayment plan. Yeah, repayment plan. That's what I want to try to say, um, which reduces the amount of payments and the length of how long you're going to be paying for these debts in one third the time, resulting in an aggressive pay down. This is absolutely life changing, folks. This is what you've been tuning into each and every week with the credit banking strategy. And Joseph has literally spent the last, uh, last I don't know, this is everything that you've learned for the last, I don't know, couple years jam packed into this book. Yes, I did pack it full of jam. It is jam packed. It's sticky, so you got to be very careful when you open it up not to tear the pages. So this book has not only, a, a full, it comes with graphs, it comes with- Well, there's more on the slide. You just have to, oh. you just have to read what you're gonna read the back of the book. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you're wondering why you need credit banking, it's rapid debt reduction, it's increasing your monthly cash flow, it's increased your cash availability, it creates financial independence, it maximizes your, uh, your real estate returns, it reduces stress, that's for sure burns calories, and you become more attractive. Yes. Definitely. When uh, your finances are in order, it reduces stress. That's in the household. That's for sure. And why doesn't everybody do it? That's the big question I always get. You know, I, people just simply don't know about it, Joseph. Many banks don't want you to do it. The mainstream media doesn't understand it. Financial advisors have never heard of it. Dave Ramsey doesn't teach it. 
Lou Dobbs didn't do a news report on it. Um, mom, and, mom and dad simply didn't do it. Mm -hmm. And your broke uncle said not to. The bottom line is people fear change. Yeah, they fear what they don't know. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, if, you, if you, this is your first time tuning in, let me tell you a little bit about Joseph. After going to college, getting a degree, getting a job, you know, he had a house payment, car payment, married with children. Basically, you found yourself broke. <laughs> broke and going through two foreclosures and bankruptcies. Yeah. You tried everything to do it the right way, but somehow um, Joseph learned that the financial system was rigged. Rigged against his success, rigged against his um, really it's wealth it's, building. It's rigged against every yeah. individual. So that's really what he has done. He's laid all of his tips and tricks and, and lessons that you've learned from all the wise, wealthy people that you've interacted with over the last six, seven years. I'd like to say it's a, it's a great book on financial strategies from the layman's perspective. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> I like it. I like it. So you can start pre-ordering this book today. Awesome. They uh, All the books will be starting to ship out on September 1st, but you, if you pre-order now, it's only $59.99, and you get a couple bonuses with this. You're not only going to get the book, you also get the ebook, and you get the audio book, and you get a credit bank calculator, you get the spreadsheets, and a whole bunch of more. We're actually packing a uh, an online drive, like a Google Drive, with all sorts of resources. We're going to have links for um, discounts to really everything and anything you'll need to implement the credit banking strategy. So this has been in works for a long time, and we're super excited to uh, start to bring it to you folks. You know how many people ask each week, hey, can I get that credit banking calculator or when we're working on budget? I would really like that budget spreadsheet that keeps totals and everything. Oh yeah, I mean, I mean, I mean all the so it, all the graphs and charts we go over each week. Excel people, spreadsheets. People like, oh, hey, I want that. Uh, oh, I want that, or I want that. So imagine being able to just have everything that we go over each and every week in one book or in one download. Yeah, this is going to be awesome. amazing. And so you can actually just find it on our website, Wise Guys and Ties, um, under the book tab. Really? Yeah. Like right there? Right there. WiseGuysandTies.com forward slash books. We're just going to dive in each and every week. We've got new people coming on each and every week. It, I mean, we were looking at some of the stats that each and every week on YouTube, as well as um, people that are joining us live, uh, there's like, what did you say, like over 150 or how many different people are, are, are subscribed to this webinar and watching it? Oh, this one, there was like 280. 280, I was way off, man. That's like one of those Samsonite <laughs> kind of things. So we have to always redefine for all of our new folks that are joining in some of the stuff. So bear with us as we go through the first couple of slides for all our seasoned veterans, but we just have to make sure that everybody's up to speed. So what is credit banking? Well, I define it as credit banking uses lines of credit to free up cash flow to transfer highly expensive amortized loan interest into simpler and less expensive forms of interest. This has the effect of radically decreasing the total number of loan payments made, which in turn reduces the total amount of interest paid, which has the result of aggressively paying down the principal balance in about one third the time. Now, that's a mouthful, but that is really what credit banking does it's the it's the, i mean how do you eat an elephant right one bite at a time how do you eat that elephant more quickly you get a whole bunch of other little mouths hey, <laughs> until they you come and eat that so why credit banking well because of the rapid debt reduction that this uh, movement of money strategy provides you, it increases your monthly cash flow, it increases your cash availability, and it creates financial independence because you begin to create your own economy. You, be, you actually start becoming your own bank. Now, for those who invest in real estate, it can maximize your returns because you can utilize this strategy to greatly reduce the debt that you have on your properties. Now, we're going to be talking a lot today about uh, about credit banking and with real estate as well. But it reduces stress. I mean, how, how much stress does it cause you each and every month when you get to the end of the month, or you're starting to get to the end of the month and you're running out of money, but there's still more bills to pay? How stressful can that be? Extremely. 
but when you start using a credit banking strategy, you find that this, that, that you have more availability of cash on hand, that the bills are getting met, and that the, the total debt balance is going down. And you just feel with, as each dollar of the debt goes down, it's like your stress is going down with you. Let me just say, kumbaya. <laughs> <laughs> and I just feel so. I thought you were gonna go like home, home. <laughs> no, that's you. You, you. you did that. Thanks. Appreciate that. But you become more attractive, and I guarantee you, it's true. It is true that when you implement a strategy like this, that doesn't require you to get an extra job, or doesn't require you to um, work extra hours, and you don't have to cut back on your lifestyle expenses but you're able to move your money through your different accounts in such a way that you eliminate your debt, your spouse finds you to be their superhero. I mean, you just become that much more attractive. And at the very basic, I mean, you turn that frown upside down. <laughs> Absolutely. So I get a question a lot. Why doesn't everybody do this then? If it's so fabulous, why have I you know, never heard of it? Well, quite simply, uh, why doesn't everybody do it? Because they don't know about it. Because many banks discourage it. Mainstream media doesn't understand it. Financial advisors have never heard of it. Dave Ramsey's doesn't teach it. Susie Orman didn't write about it. Mom and dad didn't do it. Your broke cousin said not to. And bottom line, they fear. Right? We fear the things we don't understand, which is why we have this webinar that comes at you each and every week to really break this down. And we go through a case study each and every week so that you can implement the different strategies that we talk about and practice them so that you can feel good working on somebody else's numbers so then you can begin to work on your own. And that's really exciting. Okay, so what does it take to do this? Well, there's, there's a lot of things that you could say that it takes, but right, right away, the first thing I wanna talk about is you gotta be in, be in the right mindset, right? If you're coming at this with the Eeyore mindset, oh, I don't know. We're going to lose, I bet. Like, this isn't going to work, right? You've got you've to have this uh, positive mental attitude to be able to take this on because this is the, the solution. This is the strategy. Let's talk about credit banking as a mindset because you have employees out there. Who's an employee? Anybody who gets a W-2 or a 1099 at tax season, right? Well, see, what do they do? They use their cash as a currency, right? They take all their money that they earn every month, they throw it into a bank account, and then they pay all their bills, and then the bank account drains away to nothing, and then you wait to get paid again to fill up the bank account, and you just do that over and over again every month. You're living on a cash basis mentality, and it really what it does is it creates a scarcity mentality because you only have a certain amount of money. The pie is only so big, and what happens if an expense comes up that you didn't plan for? Well, what, do you, what are we going to do? And so this is this is uh, really devastating to a lot of folks who, I mean, you can make a lot of money but still be broke at a higher level. Yeah. Or you could have no money and be broke. But either way, uh, it, it's, it's when, when, you, when you just use your cash. And we get a lot of people say, when we show them the strategy, they're like, hey, man, I don't understand why you, why you move all your money through all these different accounts. Why not just take all your cash and put it towards all your debts? And we've, we've done different trainings where we show that you can do that, of course, and there is a certain efficiency to it. But when you use leverage, then it becomes even more efficient. So let's talk about leverage, right? Wealthy folks, they use leverage as their currency. See, employees use cash as their currency, but wealthy folks use leverage as their currency. And they use their cash to accelerate and grow their wealth and create an abundance mentality. The abundance mentality is so important because you can you can never help, you can never do anything you want to do. You can never be a help to anybody if you're always going to be the charity case. That's very true. You know, one of the ways to I would say to describe this is have, have you ever been in a position where you're like, Man, what it would what it would be like to win a million dollars? Man, what would you do with a million dollars? Oh yeah, I played that game. Yeah, and then everyone talks. A lot of people are like, "Oh, well, we would pay off all these bills, and we would maybe give some money to our friends or family or something like that. And we'd go on this amazing trip. We'd buy this stuff, 
And, you know, that's what the, you know, maybe the emotional or the immature side of us would do. And then some of us are like, no, 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 no. I would take the million dollars and I would invest it into these investments. And you might be thinking Bitcoin, real estate. You might be thinking stocks and bonds, whatever it is. But you would say, I would invest all this money. Now, what would the wealthy do? The wealthy would take a million dollars if they want it, right? And they would not invest that money. They would not spend that money. They would leverage that million dollars to go get them $10 million of somebody else's money and go invest that $10 million into all these other things that produce, produce money. And then their million dollars is really their security or their deposit. Mm -hmm. That's what the wealthy do. And so that's when you've got to understand that's the abundance mentality. That is what's behind uh, the whole, I mean, I could, we can show credit banking each and every week and we do. And a lot of people watch our videos and they learn a lot of stuff, but until you make this shift, this mindset is so important because I work with a lot of folks, a lot of you who, uh, who are watching right now, we've spoken and there's some people you have doubts, you have fears and we, and we got to keep coming and watching this Eastern every week so that you can grow in your knowledge in your confidence, but also my goal, my goal, my help is to try and free your mind, right? If you're stuck in the scarcity mentality, we've got to get you out of that into an abundance mentality. And that's not something that happens in one phone call. It doesn't happen overnight. That happens when you would get continually exposed to people who are in the abundance mentality, like Ray and I, and like many of the other people that are here in this actual uh, webinar, a part of this mastermind. Okay. So what do you need to actually get started? Well, it's a simple recipe, okay? There's three ingredients to do credit banking. All you need is number one, debt. Number two, cash flow, positive monthly cash flow. And number three, a line of credit. Now, like with, with anything, if we're missing one of these three ingredients, then we can't do a credit banking strategy. Now, if we don't have debt, then obviously right there, that's not going to be an issue. But I, I find that most people have no problem coming up with the first ingredient, right? Everybody's got debt, right? Now, cash flow, this sometimes is a little bit harder for folks because some people are living paycheck to paycheck. Some people have had hard economic times hit them. And so now they're kind of upside down and they're a little bit in the red. That their expenses are a little higher than their, than their, uh, their cash flow, their income. And so, we really do spend a lot of time, especially on the week that we cover budget, 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 budget. This is when we really look at how to increase your income and decrease your expenses together at the same time to increase your overall positive monthly cash flow. And then number three, a line of credit. And you see credit banking as a strategy was originally conceived of in Australia, mm. down under, mate. And uh, they, it was a very powerful strategy. This is how people actually buy their houses in, in Australia. They don't use the mortgage loan system. They actually use lines of credit to buy their houses. And get those houses. That way a dingo doesn't eat your baby. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that Seinfeld <laughs> reference. I, I really appreciate that. <laughs> so uh, the whole, the whole um, credit banking strategy was built around using a line of credit to eliminate higher interest loans, basically. So loans, the way they're amortized, the interest is so much more expensive on the front end of the loans. Now, over time, if you stay in a loan for the whole term, 30-year term, 15-year uh, term, right, there's a lot of different terms, then you will get the low interest rate over time because on the back end, then the interest rates are really small. <clears throat> However, most people don't stay into, the, into their loans for the full term. Most people refinance within the first five years. So that's why for a lot of people, mortgages are very expensive. It's like a spider web. You get caught in it and you can't move. So the line of credit is ideal because it gives us a, a lot of, um, it's more stable, let's say, than a credit card. Now you can use a credit card because it does follow many of the same principles of, of the line of credit. But you got to be very careful. And, we're, and this is something we're going to cover today because credit cards have a way of uh, shifting their terms on you oh, on, yeah. on a monthly. It could every one month to the next month and it, it could shift on you. And so 
we've got to understand how credit cards work because they've got so many different factors and variables <laughs> that, uh, that affect how you can use them. Line of credits, they, they also, and loans, they all have factors, debt to income ratio, right? They're looking at your credit uh, utilization. All of these things are important, but uh, with a credit card, because of the way the terms of them are, they can make adjustments on you every month. And so if you don't stay on top of your credit cards, uh, that can get out of control really fast. Oh, out of, absolutely. So, <laughs> what is the lost American dream? Well, for the focus of what we're talking about here, I mean, the American dream can mean a lot of things to a lot of folks, but at the core, at the root of what we in America want is freedom, right? That's, we're coming up on Independence Day soon, right? With freedom, right? We're looking for financial freedom. Now, the whole uh, scope of this presentation is in the theme of Indiana Jones, right? He's that archeologist that's out there searching for those lost treasures and he's done all of his homework and he knows all the strategies and how to avoid all the pitfalls so that he can get to the treasure. You know, that, that's what we're looking for. We're looking for that lost American dream. Unfortunately, even with the best laid plans, you could go to school to get good grades, to, to eventually get go to college, right, to get a degree so that you can go get a job, right? But the job doesn't pay you a lot of money. In fact, you have to work 40 hours a week for 40 years of your life to eventually retire on 40% of what you made your whole life. I mean, it's it's this, it's not the American dream anymore. It becomes the American nightmare. So what really keeps us then from achieving that financial freedom? It's the out-of-control debt. All this indebtedness, this never-ending spiral of indebtedness because we can't afford what we want. I mean, you went through, you got all the good grades. You went to college. You took on that debt. You got a house. You got a car, right? All You got married. All these things uh, added up. And, and before you know it, you're half a million dollars in debt, right? I mean, with with an income, a take-home income after all taxes have been paid, of around uh, sixty thousand mm. dollars. That's it. How are you going to? You got to live too. How are you going to pay down half a million dollars in debt with sixty thousand dollars a year that you need just to live off of? Credit baby. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So. Where is the lost American dream? Well, it was lost a long time ago because of, of our dreams. We had dreams, but people uh, told us, no, you got to do this and we got to do this. And, and we just did what everybody told us to do. And it seemed like, well, I, I went, I got good grades. I got the job, but for some reason I'm drowning in debt. Well, what was lost has been found, right? We have the map and this is what we go over each and every week is we go over all the different pieces of the map. You've got the budget piece, the lines credit, lines of credit versus loans, right? And you've got the credit banking part. So once we understand how to, with the budget, how to create cash flow, that's our fuel, right? We then have to look at lines versus loans. We have to understand how these different banking products work, work and which vehicle we want to use to get us to that promised land, to the financial freedom. So with the budget, we get the cash flow, which is our fuel, and then through lines versus loans, we've learned that we want to use our lines of credit as our vehicle. So we have the fuel that goes into our vehicle. And then we need a GPS, right? We need a way to navigate to get to the promised land. Now, a lot of times GPS means the global positioning satellite, right? But what we, what we take it to mean is getting peace of mind swiftly, right? Because that's how th this credit banking strategy, when you do it, is 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 fast it is so fast that's what um and that's what we really talked about last week with uh with pain with how we're uh, paying everything down today what we're transitioning to is talking about business credit with credit banking so we've been talking about <clears throat> credit banking and going over credit all this stuff on credit banking and eliminating debt now i just throw out their business credit you know, like <laughs> business credit. What are we talking about now? Business credit is an entirely another strategy, right? Business credit is how you gain access to lines of credit without having to use your social security number or without having to provide a personal guarantee. Business credit is not even what this uh, webinar is usually about. We're always talking about credit banking, but credit banking is such an amazing strategy to eliminate debt and to create wealth. 
that it stands to reason that if you have one awesome financial strategy and you combine it with another awesome financial strategy, you get a truly amazing financial strategy. So <clears throat> with uh, credit banking, uh, the basic way of, that a lot of people do it is they use their credit cards, but ultimately we want people using a line of credit, a personal line of credit, a secure line of credit, uh, the creme de la creme would, would be using a home equity line of credit because they're so large and you've got so much money to work with. Now for a lot of people, that's not a reality. They just don't have that as an option. They either don't own a home or they have a home, but they're not able to access the equity because they don't qualify. And so this is where business credit is another way to get access to lines of credit. So if you can't access a personal line of credit, uh, a secured line of credit, a home equity line of credit, well, then we need to look at another strategy is what about accessing business credit? And you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't have a business. Well, <laughs> you need to get a business. Everybody should have a business. There's no excuse not to have a business. Well, I don't know what I should be in business for. And doesn't that cost money? It costs you money to not have a business. Well, I don't have time to talk to you about how much money you are spending in taxes and government fees and regulations. 50% of your annual income is going down that toilet. Uh, well, toilet, but to the government, okay? <laughs> if you believe that they're spending your money wisely, then, then keep going. But the, the government incentivizes business owners to make money, to employ people, to um, use products, goods, and services to add to the gross domestic product. And when you do that, they incentivize you by giving you write-offs. So what, that, what does that mean? You get to keep more of what you make. So people are like, well, that sounds good, but I don't know what I would do. Well, listen, you were put here for a reason. God put you on this earth for some reason. And you don't have to invent a new widget, right? I'm not saying that you have to uh, start some, some uh, business or uh, a repair company with your truck and you go out and you fix things. I mean, if that's what you're passionate about, that's what you should do. And that's what your business should be, whatever you're passionate about. I mean, if you like to to read and write books, then that should be what your business is. If you like to travel, uh, you, you're outdoors, whatever it is, that should be what your passion is. But until then, you should start a business and you should start to grow your business. Business credit allows you to grow your business to get access to funds that you can use to grow your business. Now, it, even while you're still trying to figure out, well, what am I going to do with my business? Doesn't mean that you can't lay a foundation, right? I don't know exactly what my house is going to look like. I don't know how I'm going to decorate my bedroom, right? That doesn't mean that we can't start building it, though, right? And so this is this is what business credit does: is you want to be in business to save money in taxes. You want to be in business to create extra streams of income in case your primary job were to go away, what would you do? Well, your business, ultimately, you want to grow it so that it it uh, makes so much money that it takes over whatever you're doing for your job so that uh, you, you have money coming in that meets your monthly expenses. And with your business, it allows you to just do what you love to do because you've heard it said, if you if you do what you love to do, you will never work a day in your life. But how many people are stuck going to a job that they hate. They're like, oh, I just, I'm sick and tired of working here. But, you know, I've got benefits, it pays the bills, so they keep working this job, but they're so unfulfilled because they're not doing what they're doing. When you start a business, you get to follow your passion. Oh, that's so true, Joseph. And the light, I think a lot of folks think that you don't have to jump into this full time. You start a side hustle mm -hmm. and slowly you'll grow this um, and you'll transition. It may take you a couple of years. It doesn't have to be done overnight. And quite frankly, you can't. <laughs> you just can't. It takes time. Well, with business credit, though, that doesn't take very long to establish. I mean, you can get $50,000 in as little as six months. You could have $150,000 in, in, in a year. And that's just from, just from starting a business. And you're like, but I haven't even made any money yet. I know. This is money that's available even for startups. Now, I say all that and you're like, hey, wait a minute, Joseph. I came here to learn about credit banking and reducing my debt and strategies and you're talking business credit because we're talking about how do you combine the two? This is an amazing strategy. Let's talk about it. Okay, let's talk about my friend Max. 
All right. Now, when we talk about business credit, we're going to say Max, he had all those same numbers that we were dealing with last week when we went through the credit banking strategy, right? He's got a $200,000 mortgage uh, on, on his house that he, well, he's been paying on that for five years. So it's really more like 189,000. Uh, he's got, um, well, I don't know where he's at, right? You know, you gotta find where people are, but we're using these same numbers, right? And uh, he's got $15,000 credit limits. Uh, let's say that's across three different credit cards. So 5,000, 5,000, 5,000, but he's carrying a uh, $12,000 balance. And let's say that's equally spread out on those three cards. So 4,000, 4,000, 4,000. Well, his income, uh, as we went through the lines versus loans, and we, so we know how to use the lines of credit, and we went through our, our budgeting piece and we learned how to eliminate uh, the, the, the monthly credit card payment. And, and we've decided not to keep throwing our money away at, um, at bad investments. I mean, people, uh, people have put a lot of money into 401ks and retirements. And they're like, I don't want to just, I don't want to stop contributing to that. But it's like, it's like polishing brass on the deck of the Titanic while it's sinking. I mean, what, what is that doing for you, right? Yeah. You, you should be immediately trying to get to a lifeboat. <laughs> but I mean, uh, when, when you invest in these 401ks, they, they um, again, we talked about the 40-40-40 plan. Traditionally, what happens to most folks is you end up with an amount of money at the end that ends up being about 40% if you, cause you're gonna pay yourself out over the time. 40% of what you were making when you were just struggling living paycheck to paycheck and then you retire and somehow having less money is going to be better. I mean, we need to accelerate your, the growth of your, uh, of your retirement. And so, so there is a lot of pushback that I get from people that are like, what you want? No, 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 no. The credit banking strategy eliminates debt, but the, and we focus so much on that, but the long-term strategy of credit banking is that it helps you produce wealth. But we, we uh, really talk a lot more about that on Thursday nights with you. Right. <laughs> but, but on this Tuesday night, we're, we really focus on how do we eliminate this debt? So here we have, we have Max. And you know what? My voice is starting to go. Can yeah, you give yeah, me a yeah, bottle yeah. of water, buddy? Absolutely. I appreciate that. <clears throat> so Max, he, why is he called Max? Because he's maxed out. Can you relate to Max? Do you ever feel like you're maxed out? I mean... For two years, he's been maxed out. For two years, Max is is in a situation where uh, his credit cards are, are, are maxed out. He, he, he's just in a situation where he wants to do the credit banking strategy. He's seen it. He understands it. But there's a bit of an issue that comes up uh, for him. Now, also, because he's been maxed out for so long, his credit score is tanking. His uh, debt to income ratio is unfortunately um, very high, which means l low chance of him qualifying for any, uh, any more credit. And his utilization is high. And so that's what we're going to talk about right now. The fact that the utilization is so high is it, oh, thank you so much, sir. Yes, sir. It has a huge impact on, on how he can implement this strategy. So take a look. We talked about $15,000 as a limit. So break of that over, say, three different credit cards, a Visa, Master, American Express, all with a $5,000 limit, but he's carrying a $4,000 balance. And it's been pretty high like that for, you know, a couple of years. Well, what would happen if Max decided, you know what, I'm going to try this credit banking strategy that I saw Joseph, he instructed last week, he talked about putting all of your income into your lines of credit freeing up that available credit and then and then putting all your expenses there and then using your cash flow to, to pay down your debts. <clears throat> so he goes ahead and he tries it. And he puts his $5,000 onto his credit card and it immediately zeroes out that balance. A $4,000 debt, bam, it's wiped out. Nice. But at the same time, the bank responds almost instantaneously, like within, you make the payment and then a billing cycle later, they have lowered your, they've lowered your available limit by, by the same amount. You paid $4,000 on the card and they lowered your limit by 4,000. I mean, it feels like you just lost money. 
I mean, in actuality, you still owed the $4,000, so you didn't lose money, but that was your income, and if you put that in there, you were supposed to get available credit back. I mean, that's the beauty of, of, of uh, the credit banking strategies. When you put your cash into a line of credit, it returns back to you in another currency, in the currency of available credit. But in this example, it didn't return back to Max. And so this has happened to some folks and then they get very upset and they're like, this credit banking strategy doesn't work and you're full of beep, you know, like they, and they get upset. And then you wonder why do Ray and Joseph always have to read disclaimers every, every time before they start, <laughs> right? Because you need to understand that your individual situation could be different from somebody else. And so if you have credit cards with a available limit and they haven't been maxed out and you're not maxed out, then this is really going to work with you on your credit card. But you still got to be careful because if you uh, exceed $50,000, not $50,000, scratch that, if you exceed 50% utilization on your credit cards for any sustained period of time, the your credit issuer has the option at their discretion to lower your limit. And so if... Um, if you're over 50% utilization right now, but let's say you're under six months, like it's just been the last couple of months, do everything you can to get that under 50% because after a six month period of time, they're gonna really, uh, I mean, what are banks doing right now with the current economic situation, right? Keeping you trapped. So <laughs> no, but that is, um, they are, they're reducing the personal, um, the personal available credit. So if you've had old credit cards, we're seeing those getting closed. We're seeing those limits getting dropped because on their balance sheets, they're having to free up available capital to fund the paycheck protection programs, mm -hmm. the, uh, the emergency injury disaster relief business loans. I mean, so they're having to free up all this capital so they can start lending it to businesses. Absolutely. So, that's, uh, that's a, the, a fortunate place where a lot of people find themselves. And so if you know this ahead of time, then this won't happen to you. But if this is still you, because, I mean, here's Max. Look, he's got a house. He's got some equity in his house. But, I mean, and a lot of people talk about when, when we say don't put all of your money into paying off your house. Someone's like, no, use all of your cash and you pay it down. You lose 100% of your buying power if you're at all like Max. Yes, you're putting your money into your house and you're saying, man, I got equity. But you can't access your equity. There is no access to your equity if you don't qualify. Your credit score is low, debt to income ratio is too high, right? Your utilization is too high. It doesn't matter how much equity you have, you can't borrow against it. The only way to get that equity is to sell the house. But then now you have a new problem. You don't have anywhere to live. <laughs> so... You've got to then go get another house. And then there goes all that equity into the next house. So uh, this is where a lot of people feel completely trapped and they feel like they're sinking into quicksand. So this is where business credit comes in because this is where we say, look, okay, you need a, you need a line of credit and you don't have the ability to get one right now because of your credit score. In fact, because of Mac's situation, he can't even get a secured credit card or a secured line of credit because he's too much of a risk, because he's been maxed out for so long. What this tells credit issuers when you, when you are like this is that you don't know how to manage the credit, the banking product called credit. You don't know how to do it. So that's why when he made the $4,000 payment, they dropped the limit because they're like, you have, you have not shown us that you know how to use this responsibly. So we're not going to take a chance on you holding another $4,000 for two years, right, out and, 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 not, and not paying that back. They want to see you keep your utilization under 30%. That's where they really want you. They're only, they're going to start, uh, there's going to start decreasing your limits if you go above 50. But if you keep it under 30% utilization, that's where they want, that's where they want, they want you using the credit every single month. They want you paying your credit down more every month than what you put on it, right? And then they want you to keep that utilization under 30%. If you can follow these rules that are on a credit card, and there's more, but those are the big ones, 
that's why when we talk about doing a credit banking strategy, it was designed for a line of credit because you you love line of credits. They, they, they might be at a variable interest rate that's based off of an index. And so you know that it, it's going to go up, but it's not like the adjustable rate mortgage that's also based on an index plus points, right? So those are always going to be even more expensive. But but with your with with a home equity line of credit based off of a variable rate, you're going to be locked into that for five, 10 years, usually 10 years is, mm. is what they lock you into. And then you've got your terms and you're pretty safe because that is secured by the asset of the house. Whereas with a credit card, there's no security there. It's an unsecured line of credit. So that's why they can change all of the terms on you every month. And if you don't follow all of their rules, and if you've never really gotten educated on credit, then you don't know all the rules, then it's very easy to, to it's like, officer, I didn't know I was speeding. Oh, well, since you didn't know, I'm not going to give you a ticket. Does it work out that way? <laughs> no, <laughs> not usually. No, you're still, so, so this is why lines of credit are great because the, there's actual collateral that, that holds the line of credit, so it's secured. Unsecured lines of credit, like the credit cards, are, are something that we have to be very careful with. I mean, you still have to be careful even with a line of credit, because with if you don't make your payments on it, you can still lose it. Same thing with a mortgage, though. If you don't make your mortgage payments, they'll foreclose and take it. So, But the thing about with your, line, with your unsecured line of credit, if your credit score goes too low, your debt-to-income ratio goes too high, utilization is too high, too many inquiries in a short period of time. I mean, all these things can, can really jeopardize your ability to use an unsecured line of credit. So that's why you got to be very careful on how, on how you do this. So you can do credit banking with a credit card, but you've just got to know all the rules. <laughs> you got to read the fine print. And when was the last time you read the fine print on a credit card? Oh, me? Yeah. Two days ago. <laughs> well, you, you, you read the fine print on, it, on not only yours, but you read the fine print on other people's credit cards. <laughs> but that's me. I'm, I'm weird like that. Now, before we got into this, never. I was like, man, this is a waste of trees. <laughs> and throw it away. Never looked at it. Absolutely. All right. So now we're going to talk about, here's a solution. Since we can't access the equity in the house, let's start a business, right? Now, the challenge with starting a business is that businesses to thrive and succeed, they need three things. They need cash flow, right? There's got to be some kind of revenue coming into the business. Number two, the business needs credit. I mean, you could have, uh, there's three forms of credit. Your personal credit, which is what we're talking about here, but there's also your bank credit, which is something a little bit uh, more secretive, right? Not a, people, not, a lot of, not a lot of people know what their bank credit rating is. And then there's business credit. And a lot of people either think they know what it is or they were certain that they knew what it was until they say, what's business credit? And then they hem and haw, right? Business credit is credit that you obtain on your business's EIN number, right? This is uh, similar. The EIN number is the tax ID number for the business, just like your social security number is the tax ID number on your personal side. So when we talk, and this is why a lot of people say, well, Joseph, I don't know what kind of business start because how can I, my business start making money? Well, folks, listen, there's no shortage of making money out there. There really isn't. There are so many great ways to start a business and start making money within a couple of weeks. Uh, there are all kinds of network marketing that's out there, referral-based marketing. There's so many businesses that offer a percentage kickback of whatever the product is that they serve, if you can bring them customers. And you might even see that sometimes like with your phone bill or your credit bill, they say, hey, if you can uh, add a new client, you know, you get a, a, a break in your in your services next month. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh, yeah, that? yeah. I mean, that's a very basic form of it, but you business, the fastest way to make money in business is to start a simple referral business. Uh, I mean, there's so many different ways that you can go. But if you have an idea for a new potion, lotion, a new patent, you want to put out there a new product you want to bring to market, you've got a, uh, you've invented a new mousetrap, right? Whatever it is, there's a business opportunity that's out there. Sometimes there's in the service business. You've got a great recipe. You're really good at baking, cooking. You want to start a restaurant, a bakery, a coffee shop. 
there's a lot of people out there that have dreams and they want to do these things. There is money, there's grants out for a lot of people to start a business that they don't even know about. Everyone thinks that, well, I've got to be independently wealthy to start a business. Oh, no, not at all. There's so much seed capital that's out there, even for startups. If you've got a great idea or you've got a successful business model, so it's all meaning somebody else has already done your business model, like say a coffee shop or something like that, and, and it's working and you just want to do the same thing, like start a franchise. Mm -hmm. A lot of franchise owners out there is a great way to start a business. So anyway, folks, you got to start a business. But every business needs cash flow, it needs credit, and it needs collateral. These three things are what give the business its uh, foundation, its financial security so that it can grow. So, so there are challenges. So, so here's the issue. Businesses have those three challenges to overcome. But on your personal side, in Max's situation, he's got his challenges. He's got his debt. He's got his low credit score. Uh, his debt, we refer to his debt to income ratio is too high. Utilization is too high. So we see that there's challenges on his personal side. He can't implement the credit banking strategy because he doesn't have access to a line of credit that will let him let him utilize the strategy appropriately. So the business has its challenges and Max has his challenges. But now here's something that's interesting. When you build business credit in a business, even as a startup, right? A simple, a simple matter. It's very simple to do. Businesses that uh, build business credit, how do they do that? They purchase product and then they get invoiced and then they pay the invoice. And then that positive payment history establishes a track record that gives them credit. And so you can get $50,000 in lines of credit in as little as six months, and it could take up to 12 months. But then someone says, well, you talked about making purchases. Well, where are we going to do that? No, well, okay, you've got to create synergy. If you start a business, right, there's certain things in your life, like you might have a cell phone, you might have a car, you might have expenses at your house, you need cleaning supplies, you need uh, toilet paper, or whatever it is, you start taking the expenses that are in your life, and you begin to convert them into business expenses. There's a lot of things uh, people are chiming in. Are you chatting with people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. That's me. All right, perfect, perfecto. So with your business, all we're trying to do is find legitimate personal expenses and make them into legitimate business expenses. So we're not talking about spending any extra money here. We're just talking about spending the money that you already have to spend every month and converting that into business expenses, write-offs. So not only are you going to be, uh, this is so cool, not only are you going to be growing your business, but you're also going to be getting that money back to you in the form of tax write-offs. Super cool. Business, starting a business is really, in my opinion, the solution to every fi financial situation you have. If your taxes are too high, start a business. If you're, if you're in too much debt, your debt's too high, start a business, right? If you don't have enough income coming in, start a business, right? If you are looking to build and grow your retirement faster, start a business. <laughs> whatever, whatever your financial, wherever you're at, business that helps you eliminate debt. It helps you pay less in taxes. So you keep more of what you make It increases your streams of income and it helps you increase or accelerate uh, your building of your retirement. So with that said, here's how we're going to create some synergy. So with a business that has $50,000 in lines of credit, now these are all kinds of things. We're talking about trade lines, store cards, right? Gas cards, like you can't really do, a, you know, loans with that. Right. But let's say half of that, half of that is unsecured credit cards for the business. We're talking about uh, a MasterCard, a Visa, American Express, something like that. And so we're going to take $25,000 of the 50K that you built in, in, say, six to 12 months. And what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take that. Now, in these credit cards, corporate credit cards, come at 0% interest for anywhere from uh, 18 to 24 months. So we're going to say, let's say you've got it for 24 months, okay? 
Well, what I'm, what I, what you see here on your screen, and this is just one of many examples. I mean, there are literally dozens of ways to do this. Okay, so some people watch what I have on the screen and they feel like, oh, I've got to do it this exact way. This is one way. Okay, the, there's a totally a, a number of ways to do this, but here's what you see on your screen. The business takes its lines of credit and it can do one of two things. It can make a loan, like it can just pull the cash out and just straight up loan max the money, or the business credit card could get a credit card. Even though you have a corporate credit card, it could get a credit card in Max's name, right? An authorized user of the, of the mm -hmm. card mm -hmm. and extend to Max a line of credit. Now we call that, uh, now, now the business is gonna to have to be just as smart as the bank. Everything that we're doing here has to have full documentation, meaning, if you have money in one hand, this is your business hand, and this is your personal hand, and you just start lending money back and forth, um, that's a big problem because if you get audited and you don't have proper documentation for that, any money that your business gave you personally is going to be considered income for you, and you're going to be taxed on it. So, no, 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 we're not going to do that. We're going to document everything. So this is going to be a loan like you would get from a bank. You're actually going to write a private mortgage note. We're talking about setting up a two-year term, an interest rate, right? And then it's going to be recorded in the business's ledger as a loan, and you're going to receive it as such a loan. So you would not you would not count that as your personal income. This is loan money that you receive that you will have to pay back. <clears throat> now, making sure that this is all documented. Um, a business that's going to uh, give that kind of loan is not usually going to make a secured, uh, an unsecured loan. It will for a certain amount. Like if, if, you're, if your business is just going to lend you, say, $5,000 or less, you could do that unsecured. You don't need to put a security instrument in place. But if you're looking for $25,000 in this case or more, right, then... Um, the IRS is, not, is still going to say, if they were auditing you, why wasn't that secure? That doesn't make sense. That's not a good business choice, right? So that's why you've got to have a, a, a security instrument. So since Max has a house and he has equity, let's, for the purpose of our example here, let's assume that Max has, when you do an appraisal of the house, or you, know, you might not need to pay for an appraisal. Let's say you call up a realtor and he gives you a BPO right? A broker's price opinion. Well, that can give you a, a fairly accurate uh, estimation of what your house is worth today. And if you calculate what you still owe, and if there's a gap of at least, let's say, $25,000, then uh, you still have that first mortgage. We're not dealing, we're not touching the first mortgage. We're still going to pay that. But the business is going to lend uh, this line of credit in second position. It's like going to be the second mortgage, right? It's going to be a home equity line of credit. But to make it official, I recommend going through a title company, but you don't have to. You could go down to the county courthouse and file the lien yourself as long as you fill out the right paperwork. But I like the title company because it's a third party. And that always, uh, it's always good because it gives you extra, it's an extra pair of eyes. There's an independent, uh, there's an independent record of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's good to use a third party. So with the title company, they're going to file your lien against the property. Now, the terms that you set up. Now, if you gave this money as a loan, then the title company could service that loan. They could take the payments. They'll, they'll come up with the whole amortization schedule uh, for the whole payback. So that's, that's very easy. Now, if, you, if you're going to extend the line of credit, then this is something that you're going to have to actually hire an accountant to manage the, the line of credit through through like QuickBooks or something like that. You're going to have to manage how the line of credit is used because the business cannot, if, if the business extends the line of credit to Max personally, everything that Max pays for on the line of credit on the personal side cannot be a business write-off because it is a loan. So the only income that the business can claim is the interest that it's charging. Now that you need to make sure that an accountant verifies all of that because if you're doing this yourself it's very easy to to miss something right there's there's a lot of moving pieces here okay so 
if it if it was a loan, then it would look like this. So instead of putting your five thousand uh, dollars onto the card, Max would then put five thousand dollars. Let's say you you put the private mortgage note for two years, thirty percent interest. It's coming up to five hundred dollar a month payments, uh, interest only. Uh, so Max is putting five hundred dollars of his income no longer on his lines of credit, like we taught in the credit banking class. He's now putting five hundred his five thousand dollars into the uh the to the title company these payments on the loan right so this would be on the he low right so if you put five thousand dollars but for a five hundred dollar payment the the title company has to extract its fee for processing right. and then four thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars then goes to the business now that is not income right for those who are if you're following this but it is revenue the difference is uh that money is mostly just loan repayment. He's got to apply almost all of that money towards uh, paying back the credit cards that Max is using. But uh, but it is it is revenue. So there are revenue-based lenders out there, like um, your merchant service providers mm -hmm. are revenue-based lenders. So right off the bat, just by setting things up this way, you've got the third party, you've got your private mortgage note, uh, and you're making you're you're not you've got a five hundred dollar minimum payment, but you've got five thousand dollars. So you're overpaying it, so all of that extra money is flowing over to the business's revenue, but most of it is accounted for in in the loan repayment. However, there is income there still thirty percent right income, but that thirty percent is an APR that's got to be divided by twelve. So really only two. But two and a half percent of the actual balance is really being is really being income. So <laughs> these are things that when you have an accountant, they're gonna they're gonna take care. Yeah, of Raul that. had that question. So if you do it as a loan from the line of credit to the second lien position loan, are you going from simple interest to amortization interest? Well, so are you? Where are they gonna? Is the title company gonna amortize it out over the two years? Yeah, the am amortization just means how you pay back the principal and the interest. The way that the banks do it with the front loaded, you know, the, that amortization model, this is not going to follow that model. That's why you see on the private mortgage note, 30%. That's 30% as an APR. I should, I'll update the slide next time and put APR there. Um, but yeah, I mean, but yeah it, it's just because it's a small, it's a two-year loan, right, that you're making. So amortizing it doesn't really make all i mean using the bank model of amortization doesn't make sense because there's only two years all right uh not a, there's not enough payment cycles to to to, to do that so instead then you charge a higher apr uh to, to to make the money and you do have to so you don't want to give yourself this sweetheart deal either again because remember if you ever get audited and you decided to charge yourself you know, 1% interest, well, I mean, the bank's gonna be like, come on, <laughs> that's not realistic. So what you wanna do is you wanna do everything above board. You wanna be honest, you wanna always have open books, you wanna record everything. And that's what makes this strategy difficult. It's not difficult to actually execute, it's difficult because of how you have to keep track of your finances. You really, for, I mean, Ray and I, when we do this, we don't even do it ourselves. We actually have our accountant do, I mean, we set it up this way, but we have the professionals actually do all the, all the numbers for us, do the math work for it. But look at what's happened right off the bat. So right off the bat, Max has got $25,000 in a loan, right? And at the same time, so that's going to really help his debt to income ratio right off the bat. At the same time, the business has picked up cash flow. So now both are starting to experience some benefit. Max has got some money to work with now, and the business has got some cash flow to work with. We're off to the races, folks. Let's see how else we can get this working. So I need to go ahead and stop my picture just for a moment so you can see what we're doing here. In your upper right-hand corner, what you should see is the, the credit banking uh, curve that you normally see, right? So uh, this is what it looks like on the on the corporate credit side. So where 
for the business on their lines of credit, uh, they just gave 25,000, they just like racked it up to $25,000. Now what's great on business credit is there is no utilization consideration. So people are like, oh my gosh, you just maxed out your card. Isn't that what got Max in trouble? Well, yeah, on personal credit, you've got to stay below 50% utilization. But on business credit, they don't have that rule. So businesses can max out their credit at no penalty. It's another advantage of business credit. So immediately, $25,000, bam, is on, the, is on the corporate credit card. But remember, you see Max, he's, every month he's putting $5,000 uh, into, into, um, into this line of credit. So it's getting paid down. Um, the, the expenses are going back to, uh, onto this card as well, right? Because you've got $3,000 of expenses. $5,000 down, $3,000 expenses. When you do that over and over again, it's paid off in 11 months. At $25,000 with the $2,000 cash flow is paid off in 11 months. So again, when I talk, I keep going back and forth. I'm talking loan, I'm talking line of credit loan. It depends on how you set it up, right? It just depends. If you're, if you're doing the loan route, then you're just restricting, receiving straight payments. So then the it's not making that little jagged curve going down. It, it would just be a straight line coming down, mm. right? But if you if you extend it as a line of credit, then it's going to have that jagged line to it. So uh, let me start our camera back up because I want you to see our beautiful faces. That's what's most important. That in, in credit banking. <laughs> so as you, as you as you continue to work this down. It's if you're using it as if you're extending it as a line of credit. So you made Max an authorized user on the corporate credit card account for the business. Matt, and, and you know it's weird, is but Matt, doesn't Max own the business? Yes, he does. But when he uses the card for the business to make a legitimate business expense, that's different than if he extends a line of credit to himself personally to make purchases of a personal nature. This is why you've got, and you've got to have documentation. And when you give Max the authorized card, there's now a record in the credit card statement that shows, well, this is what the main account paid for. And here's what the authorized user paid for. Now the, the main account has to pay for all of it, but at least you now have it itemized out for you, right? Mm -hmm. your, your accountants now love you that you did it that way. So that they can keep better uh, records of it. So as you're paying this down, if you're using the, the line of credit method of extending the line of credit, Max puts $3,000 of expenses, then he pays it down. So it's all paid off in 11 months. But remember, this is a 0% interest card for the business for 24 months. So Max, he could max out another $25,000 and then sweep that down again. So Max, remember, he has two autos. Uh, he, has, uh, <clears throat> he has his house... Right, he's got his credit cards. Well, let's say with the first $25,000, he wipes out his credit card balances. Now those limits, they all drop, right? But at least that's, that's zeroed out for him. He's freeing up that cash flow. Then let's say uh, the other half of that, he puts towards paying off one of the cars. So he's got mm -hmm. one car paid off and he's got his credit lines reduced. He's freed up like $900 of cash flow, Ooh, right? Awesome. Just, just with that first shot. And so he's able to sweep this down in 11 months, pay, paying this down. Now he gets another $25,000 for, for his next round. And he decides, you know what? I, um, I mean, it just depends on, on where he's at. So let's say he just puts all of that onto the house, you know? Or he decides to pay off the car, does, does say he does half. I'm gonna put 12,000, pay off the second car and then $12,000 onto the house. But he sweeps that all down in another 11 months. That would be either amazing. Way. Either yeah. way. So now he's freed up uh, $1,200 of cash flow, and he's accelerated uh, in two years. His, uh, he's now moved ahead four years in, in time in his, uh, in his uh, amortization on his house. He's uh, probably saved somewhere around $30,000 in interest right now. So this is, uh, this is pretty amazing, folks. So uh, all, 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 all the while with the business now, let's go back to the business. What has happened with the business is this $25,000 corporate line of credit 
that was used every month over and over and over again. It has two, 24 months of positive activity and it's always getting used and paid down. Well, it's not hard in 24 months because every six months you can ask for a credit limit increase. On your personal side, that would cost you an inquiry. On the, on the uh, business credit side, it'll still cost you an inquiry, but guess what? Inquiries don't count against you. So, so every six months, you're asking for a credit limit increase on those cards due to your activity, and you get uh, credit limit increases. It is possible to take $25,000 in corporate lines of credit over 24 months and grow that up to $150,000. I say up to because maybe you only grow it to $100,000. But if you have enough payment history and you're creating uh, enough payment and you're making all your payments on time and you've got a lot of, I mean, these accounts that you have, this might be over four or five, maybe even eight different accounts that you have. And so if you've got all this positive payment experience happening, this is going to look really good for the business. In fact, so good that you're going to notice that we just got ourselves our second star. Because the business, while we, we gained the initial business credit, we really didn't establish the track record of a positive payment history. So we were extended some initial lines of credit, some business credit, but then we used it the right way and we grew it to $150,000. We have the potential to grow it up to that much. So every, everybody's situation is gonna be slightly different. We're using the numbers here in this example to show how you could reach 150,000, right? So now let's talk about the fact that um, how is this money secured? It's secured by the collateral, by the private mortgage note, the two-year note at 30% interest in second lien position. What does that mean? That means that your business has equitable interest in your house. It has a tangible asset. In fact, it means that we've achieved the third star, collateral. Your business now for its books can show revenue based off of its cash flow, right? It's got uh, credit and it's got collateral. Now, that's great for the business and you can use that to continue to grow and, and build this business, right? This is just the start. But what happened to Max? How did Max benefit? Well, his utilization went down, his debt to income ratio went down and his credit score went up over these two years. So we turned that frown upside down. Max is now happy because his impossible situation is completely turned around. He's been using his lines of credit a little bit, and so he's growing those limits by being responsible, keeping his utilization under 30%, right? His uh, debt to income ratio has gone down because he's eliminated his credit card debt, he's eliminated both of his auto vehicle debts, and he's brought the debt of his house down by another $12,000. In a in a twenty you know in this twenty four uh, month period of time, so this has been absolutely huge. So he is absolutely reaping the benefits of doing credit banking with business credit. So when his credit score has now gone up, he's now on a position where let's say his credit score, which was in the tank, maybe it was in the four hundreds. After this two year period of time, it would not be unheard of to be at six eighty by now. He could be at 680, maybe 700 as a credit score. What can Max do with that? Well, he can now be in a position to give his business a personal guarantee. What does that allow him to do? It's like Max is going to co-sign for some more credit cards for the business. He can get with his, per with his personal credit score, right? If he grows those credit cards up uh, and he gets and he can over the period of time, he can uh, get the limits on those credit cards expanded. You know, we want to see 5,000, 10,000, right? If he's, if he's being responsible and utilizing the credit banking strategy, as we've talked about, because this whole business credit with credit banking, we're done in two years. Max is able now to get going on his own, but now he can give a personal guarantee and he can give up to another $50,000 in corporate credit cards with a personal guarantee. I say up to, because again, it's going to depend a lot on where Max's credit is. So during the time, the two years where Max eliminated his credit, uh, the balances on his credit cards, 
he needed to make sure that he was using those credit cards every month, making small little purchases, staying under 30% utilization, and then every six months or so, trying to get his credit limit increased. Keeping in mind that if you ask for uh, the credit limit increase, there will be a, um, that you will get an inquiry. So you gotta manage those inquiries well. It's okay to use an inquiry if you're gonna get something for it, but, uh, but again, a lot of moving parts here. But if, let's say Max got those credit lines over two years up to say 10,000, 15,000 limits. So he, he got them back and he's got them back because he's now doing, uh, using his credit the right way. And every six months he can ask for a credit limit increase because he has the payment history to justify it. He could get up to $150,000. Maybe he only gets 100, maybe he only gets 75,000. But whatever that is, that's additional credit that now the business can use, right? And because you, uh, the business is building business credit and it's got that gold star by the credit, the business has the ability after establishing a positive payment history of six months with the new line of credit, to get the personal guarantee removed. There's a couple of ways to do that. We're not gonna cover that now. But this is how this is how you do business credit with credit banking. One, uh, I mean, a lot of different ways to do it. You can do it as a loan, do it as a line of credit. Uh, you can collateralize a house, you can collateralize really anything that has over a $10,000 value legitimately. But man, this is, this is uh, cr uh, business credit with credit banking. Ray, what, what are some of the outstanding questions that we've been getting? Because I'm done. That, that was it. Well, I mean, you're just, for me, I mean, you're just, you know, it, just melting minds. That's what it is. A lot of folks are just, they're looking on how they can get plugged into this. They want to be able to do this for themselves. Um, so, you know, a lot of folks on here, they're wanting to know about consultations or want to know if they can get plugged in um, to their situation. A lot of people throwing out some numbers. And so that's really what it is, mm -hmm. letting you folks know that, hey, yeah, um, the case studies that we go over each and every week, because that's the second half of the mastermind where we go over our case studies, mm -hmm. you can submit your situation. And, uh, you know, I was just explaining there in the chat that a lot of folks ask me all the time, they're like, well, why do you guys do these free consultations and literally tell me, um, you know, analyze my situation? Why aren't you charging us for that? And, then, and it comes down to a win-win situation. We get content. We're gonna use your numbers on an upcoming webinar. And so we're not gonna use any of your personal information, but we get to use that as content in a case study. And then for you, you're gonna get some strategy session with us working on your situation, and that's gonna benefit somebody else. There's a lot more that goes into that. It's gonna help other folks achieve what they're gonna achieve or what they should be achieving. And then, you know, if you do need additional help after that, it's kind of like learning how to do your taxes. You know, you could just go out and do TurboTax or you could actually hire a CPA. We'll show you how to go do it yourself. But if you need that CPA to help you hold your hand through the process on an ongoing process, or you want to take a class on that, we can help you with all those different aspects. I absolutely agree with everything you're saying. See, the, the, the thing is, is most people, they're familiar with debt. They're familiar that they've got financial problems. They need a solution. Uh, this is not something that I'm gonna charge money for because most people have money issues, right? This is not something, what, what people need to, what, what I need to help you do is I need you to get out of a scarcity mindset and into an abundance mindset. And if you can see, this is abundance mindset thinking right here. If you can see the power of starting a business to help yourself out and relieve your financial woes at the same time build and grow a legitimate success i mean now in this example here you have a business with three hundred thousand dollars in access to corporate credit this business could just go ahead and pay off the rest of your mortgage and then uh, and then legitimately have a first position home equity line of credit on your house that you pay for right? and the business has more collateral it has more credit it now is going to get more cash flow from you and you get more write-offs i mean there's so many there's so many different advantages here but here's the point of why we do it this way because when more people get to become business owners and they need to implement these strategies this is what we do 
So I'm a real estate investor. So is Mr. Ray Fleming here. And we have spent our lives looking for people to invest in our, pro our lives. We spent the last six years looking for investors to invest in our, in our businesses. And we have, and, and it's wonderful. But what we've noticed is a lot of folks that we've worked with, and, and there's many that want to do this, but they're max and maybe your max. And so we had this epiphany one day when we were building business credit and we were just having, I mean, we were just having so much fun putting this together and we were just realizing that nobody else is doing this. Mm -hmm. But if people were doing this, they would be eliminating their problems. And so then the idea came, well, Ray, what if we help as many people as we can for free, get out of their financial situations and put money in their pocket and help them become wealthy, financially free, how many of those people might return back to us as future investment partners, as, uh, as uh, people who would be money lenders to us and our business deals, uh, people who would uh, hire us to help them do their business credit portion of their business. Uh, I mean, that is, that is the whole foundation of why we do this. We have to prove to you that we have value to offer you. We have to show you that we can do this, we can help you. And by helping you now is basically like us putting our resume out there so that when you do run into a situation where, well, I do need a business, I do need business credit, I do need help with this. Well, now you know who to go to. And then when you see, because we have a lot of deals going on folks, and every once in a while there's an offering that we might put out there and you might see an opportunity to come in for, I don't know, a couple thousand dollars uh, maybe on, on a deal or something, right? I'm not soliciting anything here on this channel <laughs> right now for anybody in the FTC or that's watching me, SCC. Any of you folks, I'm not soliciting for anything right now. All I'm saying is that there is, we have found that uh, you get what you give. That's really the principle behind this. And so if we can give you guys a lot of opportunities to change your life, like it's changed my life, like it's changed Ray's life, then uh, we might find, and this isn't going to be everybody, but we might find that there's something else that we could do together. That, that's really how it works. It is. Be the change you want to see. We were talking to, I was talking to this guy, Rudy, over the, oh, I wasn't supposed to say his name, but it's so his first name. Over the weekend, I was talking with him, and he's just been watching us, hanging out, and just working over the last six months. And in the last six months, he basically, all he does is he, he works construction, works all day, six days a week. And he's just been grinding it out on his two hour drive commute. He just listens to this and he's been following it step by step. He's limited like $35,000 in debt in six mm -hmm. months. Basically just funneling everything through his lines of credit. And now he's in a tremendous situation where he's like, now I want to I want to start my own uh, construction business. We had this one single mom we worked with who was like like over a hundred thousand dollars in debt, and uh, we implemented a business credit credit banking strategy, eliminated all of her debt, and now has like fifty thousand dollars in lines of credit, and she and and all that debt that we eliminated was still credit. I mean, she's gone on to become a real estate investor and has done something like what four properties in the last two years oh, yeah. and made thirty thousand dollars profit. That's awesome. So on top of that, with her lines of credit, as a single mom, I mean, so I'm just there's no excuse. People are like, well, you don't understand my situation. I'm like, yeah, we have a lot of people that are in your situation. We like that because it. everybody is Max. That's why I do because Max in this, so you know, Max was me. <laughs> All right. I, I, I was Max, <laughs> if you need to know. All right, folks. So when we take the all the pieces of the map, the budget, the lines of credit, uh, the credit banking, we put it all together. We talked about how do we how do we get there, right? Well, we put all the pieces together and then we've created our cash flow. We've got our fuel for our vehicle. And then we get, we, we, we start now using the GPS, right? <laughs> Getting peace of mind swiftly. And we pay down our debts very quickly using the credit banking method, especially even faster. Like this is an old prop engine plane, but like when you, when you uh, use credit banking with business credit, that's like getting in the SR 71 Blackbird and going four times the speed of sound, right? It just accelerates the, the, the credit banking is such an awesome strategy. I love it. 
But when you combine it with other, there's other strategies we can combine it with too, but that's for a whole nother training. Now, we're getting up to my favorite time, folks, where we're going to be talking about our case study. Oh, today's case study, you're going to love it. Uh, we're, we're working with uh, this, this uh, what if you are a single uh, parent, right? And, and, and you've, got, you've got debt and you've got a little bit of income. I mean, how can we get out of, I mean, because a lot of people, well, you've got two incomes and you're able to, you've got all these resources. Well, this is a really good case, case study where we can look at how, how quickly can we eliminate student loan debt? How can we eliminate auto loan debts? Like, how can we just get rid of all of it? I mean, like, right, like, say the, this case study, it stands where, where they're at. Like, they're gonna, this single parent is going to be in debt for the better part of the next five or six years. But how could we use credit banking with the situation they're already in? And get that done in like two years. Ooh, that's exciting. You got to stick around for that. But we have a public service announcement from Mr. Ray Fleming. Well, so we were just, we just spent a lot of time actually talking about that. This is all just part of this wealth creation plan, the five pillars of wealth, because there's business, there's taxes, there's credit banking, there's real estate, and there's education. Now, credit banking, you already are on this. This is every Tuesday night. 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, where you can learn about how to get out of debt, beat the bank at its own game. Then there's the Real Estate Investing Mastermind. That takes place on Thursday. Thursdays, 6 p.m. Pacific Time, same channel. Um, you can always go and register for these Zoom webinars at uh, wiseguysandties.com forward slash events. You'll see the event tab at the top of the page. Now, through the next couple of weeks, each week we'll cover a different little topic for a few minutes. You um, don't have time to go over all five. Yeah, we're not going to go over all these today, but I just wanted you guys to know that we also talk about taxes, education, and business. Business. This Saturday, uh, 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, so noon for you East Coasters, we have the business credit playbook training, step by step, how to build business credit. That's going to be on the Wise Guys and Ties YouTube channel. So make sure you plug into that. Um, in the description, there's a way for you to just click the link. The, the video's ready. It's oh, not not ready, but there's like a scheduling page in YouTube where you can just set a reminder, and you'll get a reminder when that um, when that training goes live. Some people have. Uh They've seen this training before, but it's all different now. We've got all new. We got four bonuses in there too. Oh yeah, we got some underwriting guidelines for some accounts that you could get today as a business owner. But in the last twenty-eight days, we've added one thousand one hundred and fifty new people to our channel. So we've got a. These are people that are like business credit. What's this business credit? We keep getting people are like, how do you not know that we do business credit? Yeah, you want to learn how to do <laughs> business credit? We'll teach you step by step. So business, it's a powerful concept um, that is crucial to any wealth creation. Because let me ask you this. Who lives here? Is this a business owner or an employee? <laughs> I mean, you, it's, it's just, we just realize these things. And I want you to ponder on this. If you don't build your dreams, somebody else will hire you to build theirs. And we said, you know, this, this is a way to start it as a side hustle. You can start your business on the side moving towards whatever it is that you enjoy. Let's talk about it. Let's figure out how to create that into a company. And building your cash flow, not just from your, from your day job, but creating true return on investment. And that's by building your business, building a business that is profitable, um, learning about the whole finance and operations, because to be truly out of debt and understand it, you're going to have to run your personal side like a business anyway. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind that you got to start really building some assets, create some major assets that are going to be really building that wealth. So when you actually come to the retirement age, you don't have to be worried about where those revenues are going to be coming from. Can I just insert one thing? When you build business credit on a business, you turn the business into an asset. Oh, absolutely. Because business credit, if you were to sell the business, transfers with the business. Imagine that. If you built up $150,000 in lines of credit for the business and you paid them all down and those lines of credit are there and you sell this business, what's that worth? Well, 
I mean, it's worth at least 150000 because that's when it's got access. Exactly. Plus whatever the actual business is. So if you have clients or an operation or something like that, I mean, so when you start a business, you are actually just with the business itself. If you do it the right way, you are creating right there a major asset. It is. And that's the power of leverage, mm -hmm. power of leverage and understanding that, you know, having a just 1% effort of a hundred people is better than a hundred percent of your own effort. And so learning how to leverage the bank, le leveraging other companies, leveraging everything else to your advantage and building that legacy that will last a long, a last forever. Um, you know, I think about that with our children, with your grandkids, with your future children, the children you don't even have, or, you know, there's charities out there building something that you can actually create some difference in the world because nothing has ever been fueled without funds and resources. And it's, you can either choose to use your money for good or evil. And so I encourage you to use your wealth for good. Well, folks, you can go to and find out more at followustofreedom.info where you can learn all about all of these on demand on what we do to help you each and every week. What happens when somebody goes to followustofreedom.info? Well, they're going to see a quick little video and what you're going to do is you're entering your information and you're going to get plugged into an amazing one hour and a half training that will show you kind of a encompassing view of all that we do outside of YouTube because there's this entire network of and weekly webinars that are taking place off YouTube off of zoom well they are actually they're in pri other private zoom webinars um, with hundreds of folks you know working on real estate working on debt pay down strategies learning tax, together, savings, tax right. savings and so meant it's if you're looking for a group of folks to run with and to go with, we, I encourage you to go over there and check it out. Right. I mean, the, the owner of this YouTube channel that we're currently on uses, uh, uses that strategy, and uh, we've used uh, the same strategy. Absolutely. Th thank you, That's Ray. how we all kind of met. Yeah, absolutely. Thank Ray. you, Ray. That was awesome. Hey, you're welcome. All right. Who's ready for a case study? Yeah, I'm ready for a case study. Are you ready for a case study? All right. Hold on. Let's, I got to get to the point where, okay. Now, I go over here, and I got to click a button over here. I got to share my screen over here. Um, why isn't it sharing? Ah, there we go. There, I want to share my screen now. And here we are. We're on the case study. I might need to make that a little bit bigger. I th think I'm sharing my screen. Other ones. Huh. Ready? What did I do wrong? Uh oh. What, what did we break? Can can people see mastermind? I can see your mastermind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. That's weird. We, that's okay. Yeah. All right. I thought maybe it was. I can see your screen. All right. I just wasn't sure if it was working. <laughs> okay. All right, folks. This is all right. So you've been listening to us ramble on. And train you on these amazing strategies this is where it becomes interactive okay this is where I'm reaching out to all of you all of you out there in the mastermind right I'm talking to you Alfredo Daniel Dominique Don Gethsemane girl Max hey we did have somebody who was maxed out all right Nigel Pat right I'm talking to you Raul Yasmin this you guys are uh, participating now if this is your first time and you're like um one, you're kind of like feeling your way through. You, it's okay to just watch and listen. But for those of you who are my seasoned veterans, show them how it's done. Because this is where we, we jump out and we start, uh, we, start, we start throwing ideas out. What we're looking at here, and I'm going to run you through it, but we are looking at the numbers of these are real life income expenses. This is somebody's budget. And we're going to try from what we've learned each and every week that we come because there's always a different training, a different piece of the puzzle, a different part of the map. We're putting it all together and we're gonna see if we can mastermind how we can take and eliminate this debt and, 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 and uh, set this person financially free. Because if we can do it here in a case study, then we can then have
have the confidence to do it with our own finances. So income of 3,860, expenses of 2,967, available credit of 48,000, a credit balance of 4,900 with an average interest rate of 16.9%. We have a loan amount of $14,000 for 46 months. This was uh, some, a loan that just started as an auto loan at 3.99%. Payments are $351. Uh, this person receives child support in addition to work income. Uh, they have a $20,000 credit card with a zero balance at 12.99%. $25,000 credit card with a $4,900 balance. Minimum payment, $98. Um, but they make extra payment there. A $3,000 uh, line of credit at 16.9%, and they've uh, got a $14,000 student loan. Uh, currently, uh, is not charging them anything until September when they uh, could start paying $100 a month. And then, of course, they got that uh, auto loan. This was refinanced just recently, so it was at 8.96, but they refinanced it to 3.99. So the payment went down from 384 to 351. All right. So and a personal loan of 4,500. Yeah, and then another loan of 4,500 at six percent interest. This is a. Uh, I want to say. A I know some of you are jumping all over that right now. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, uh, if you were following along from the beginning, you know what our what the three ingredients are. We need debt. I think we see debt here. We need positive monthly income, which it looks like we have that, and we need a line of credit. So we have the three ingredients. So let's let's go ahead and uh, put it all together here. So first thing we're going to be looking for, what is our cash flow? I need somebody to tell me what our cash flow is. 893. All right. Let's go ahead and put that out there. Good job, Raul. Well, I'm just guessing that that's right, but let's check the math. Oh, you want me to do the math? I just uh, I just assume that Raul is always right. It looks pretty good to me. Yeah. So if we subtract yeah. two thousand nine hundred sixty-seven, yeah. that equals eight hundred ninety. What, Raul? I didn't doubt you. <laughs> I did not doubt you, Raul. <laughs> just remember who doubted you. <laughs> All right. So here's our cash flow. Very very important. This is the fuel. Remember the fuel for the for the credit banking credit banking ship. Okay, so we've got our available credit at 48,000. We are carrying a balance of 4,900. So what we need to do now, remember we were talking about max. We need to, if we're gonna use credit cards here, we need to make sure we know what our utilization is right now. Utilization. And we need to know what our utilization is because that is going to be key to what we're going to do. So this is where you jump in and you, you tell us what is, what's the utilization here, folks? Utilization. How do, how do you calculate utilization? You take your balance here, 4,900, and you divide that by 4,800. So you divide that by 4,800. Another zero there. Ten point two. There we go. Well, uh, ten point two. Well, we'll just round it to ten. All right, we're at ten percent. Ten percent utilization. All right. So good job, bro. Our goal is to keep our utilization under thirty percent. How are we doing? That's a great utilization. Absolutely. So this gives us confidence that we can move forward using these credit cards with a credit banking strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, if our utilization was at 50%, 80%, we would, uh, we would have some concerns and we'd look down here and see credit card, credit card, and we'd go, oh, look, you do have a line of credit. Well, we might want to really rely on the line of credit <laughs> and, and be aware of that these credit cards might uh, play monkey games with us. Okay. Now we're looking at a $14,000 debt uh, here for this, uh, for this uh, auto loan. And we also have a $14,000 student loan right, right now. The, the monthly payment is zero, <laughs> but
but it will be $100 uh, in about four months, $100 a month in four months. And then we have a personal loan of $4,500 at 6%. So we have 233. How do we know which one to pay off? We talked about this last week. It's called debt efficiency, right? So we need to look at our debt efficiency. Oops, debt efficiency, if I can spell. Debt efficiency is the money that we have allocated towards the debt. How efficient is that working? So if you have a, a huge payment on a small amount of money, that's very inefficient. If you have a large debt and a small payment, that's very efficient. So we look at the ratio. It's a comparison between that. So we take the total amount that's owed. So here's 14000 And we would divide that by our minimum monthly payment of 351 Right? So what's our debt efficiency? As a, yes, balance and payments. So that's not a dollar sign there, but the debt efficiency here is 39.89. That's, that's a ratio comparison. The lower the efficiency, the, uh, the more you need to get on, on paying that off, right? So when the debt efficiency is around, 50 on this, that's when we look at uh, potentially doing a refinance. But this was just re recently refinanced, and so that is not necessary again. But what about the debt efficiency on, say, the student loan? Well, if we come over here, obviously, I mean, you could uh, do this in your head, but if you take 14,000 and you divide that by 100, you're going to get 140. Right? So when our efficiency is 100 or more, that's a very efficient debt because we have a very low payment for a very large amount. So that's efficient. So this is, this is a debt efficiency that we, we could hold on to for a while. But then let's look at this personal loan. We want to take 4,500 and we want to divide that by the minimum payment. Right, so let's look at the debt efficiency here. Wah, wah, wah. Mm. This is right wow. now our uh, extremely, <laughs> extreme inefficiency. <laughs> yes, the epitome of efficiency. You've got a high payment on yes. uh, a low amount of money. Rolls with me on that. Pay that first. So Rolls says we should pay this first. But now, how are we going to do this? So. Let's look, right now we have a $25,000 credit card here, with the $4,900 balance. And we have a $20,000 credit card here, the 0% balance. Now, you guys remember there's a principle is if you don't use it, you lose it. So we gotta look at all of this, uh, all of these expenses here. And we've gotta make sure that we spread it out over the line of credit, this $25,000 credit card and this $20,000 credit card and we got to pay it all off. So we've got to put all, we've got to rack up all the debt and then we've got to put the, all the income to pay it off every month and then put the expenses back on month in, month out. And then we will pay with our extra cash flow. We will direct it at, so as we pay everything, everything off. So all of the expenses, this $2,967, we're going to divide that up over these uh, these lines of credit here, right? We're gonna we're gonna divide up the expenses here on these on these uh, two credit cards and a line of credit. Now the leftover once once we put all the expenses there, we take all of the income that comes in the three thousand eight hundred and sixty, and we use that to pay off all all of those expenses that we just put on there, and then as well as we are, are going to put that extra, in this case, towards this loan. So this $233 loan payment is gonna be thrown onto a line of credit. But not only that, is we're gonna take an extra $893 and apply that and make an extra principal only payment mm -hmm. on top of that. So this $233 payment will go onto a line of credit. That'll be made, that'll make sure that the interest is getting satisfied, paid, but then we're gonna make an extra $893 payment that needs to be 
you know, earmarked, it needs to be noted that it is a principal only payment. Now, if we take the four thousand five hundred dollars, right, and we divide that by our monthly cash flow of eight hundred ninety three dollars, we will have that knocked out in five months. You see that? Mm -hmm. Five months from now, it was going to. It's a two year loan. It's twenty four right. month loan. A twenty four month loan knocked out in five months. Right. Now, now with that gone. What, what do we do with this with this amount right here? We have, uh, once this personal loan is, is done, what do we do? What do we do with it? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? What do we do, folks? What do we do? Yeah, we just paid off the personal loan in five months. What happens to this $233 payment? Well, it goes to the cash flow. That is right. Good job, Ray. You're one of the best. I was just reading what Raul said. Oh, did Raul say that? <laughs> Add it to the 893. That's right, folks. So in five months, we've just increased our cash flow to $1,126 by decreasing our expenses by $233. So there's where our expenses are now. Did, I have, did we have to get an extra job? Nope. Did we work extra overtime? Nope. Did we have to cut back to the beans and rice diet here? Nope. Folks, this is, this is uh, credit banking. Now, we've got an auto loan with a debt efficiency of 39.89, and we've got a student loan debt efficiency of 140. Hmm, which one should we take care of next? That's a, that's a great question. <laughs> uh, uh, Raul says pay the auto loan. Raul, you have like been voted by everybody. In the oh, John restaurant. says auto loan too. They came in right at the same time. Good Boom, stuff. all right. I'd like to see the participation. Hey, John, good stuff. All right, good job. Okay, so. Alex, good job, Alex. Hey, yeah, Alex, good stuff. So. Again, just like we did with the personal loan, we're gonna keep putting all of the expenses, dividing them up on these lines of credit, not exceeding 30% uh, utilization, right? And paying them down and with, with our income. But now we have $1,126 of cash flow. Let's look at this uh, auto loan. Now, five, five months into this, you know, 40, 46 months will now be uh, 41 months, right? So. This would probably be around uh, 13,000, right? So it'll be a slightly different amount, but let's for a conservative purpose say we were working uh, at 14. How long would it take? Well, we divide that by our cash flow, right? It's done in 12 months. Now, it's gonna, it, it says 12.43 months, but uh, again, having been five months uh, doing this, five months of payment, uh, if I, I left my, I left my mortgage calculator over there. But I, uh, I'm going to tell you that it's going to, you're going to knock a, a thousand off of that. So what if we were here, right? And then, and then we came to here. See, there you go. Now, now the numbers look right. So in five months, we eliminate that personal loan, right? Then we go to the auto loan, and this is a, it's almost four years, right? It's like 3.8. We eliminate that auto loan in one year. Bam! One year. Gone. Nice. Saving ourselves all that interest. Now, we've eliminated the personal loan. We, we've eliminated the auto loan. And we're only, we're less than 18 months into this. We're 17 months into this. Well, the only other debt we have left here is this is the student loan. Well, but here we just freed up. We just 350. So we got we got to add that in, right? 351. That changes our cash flow, doesn't it? 14 Alex says 1477. On top of it. Is it? Yes. Could it be? All right, hold on. There it is. There it is. Good job, Alex. Yeah. And then uh, we go over here, 
And uh, we remember this is happening because we're decreasing our expenses. So our expenses are now down to 2,383. Okay, so what are we gonna do? We're gonna take our 14,000 that we have over here. Let's create a new line here. We have 14,000. We're gonna divide that by, what was that, 1,477? 1,477. All right, how long is this gonna take? 10 months. 10 months. 10 months. Imagine so, that. All the student loans knocked out in 10 So months. you can knock out all of your debt in two years and four months. Two years, four months to knock out a car loan. A student, student 14, so we got $14,000 personal loan. loan. We got a $4,500 personal loan. We got another $14,000 auto loan. And that's all knocked out and done and paid off and finished in two years, four months. Nice. But then also they've been paying. That's have have we changed anything with them paying um, the two hundred and thirty dollars a month towards their card, or did we leave that the same? The two hundred and thirty. Um, well, with this, we we just we're oh, we're paying. We're paying way more than the 98 that's needed. But this person is a single parent, right? And now they're going to be able to have no debt. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in, in this situation, it's very fortunate that they have these lines of credit here to deal with, right? Some people are like, well, I don't have lines of credit. Well, what would we have done if we had had no lines of credit? Well, we can't we can't play the game without a line of credit, but we could take the income and throw it into a secured line of credit. Absolutely. And the secured line of credit at a bank would give us access to 90% value, value of that loan. So you put it in a, a CD at the bank, and then the bank gives you a line of credit uh, up to 90% of that value. And so we could have, it would have gone a little bit slower that way, but, uh, man, if I mean, this is great that we had all this uh, credit to work with, but if you don't, there's there's still ways to make this work. But folks, I mean, I just have to tell you that uh, this is exciting. This is this is why we do this. I mean, think about uh, a, a a single parent. I mean, life is already challenging, and sometimes things happen, and and you know, you're 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 in a situation where you the you've got to not only work. You got to raise the kid, right? Or kids, right? Could be multiple kids, but I mean, this is this is challenging, and there's only only so much you can do, and so it's not hard to rack up debt and have you know student loans. Like you're trying to get an education to get a better job or career, and so here's a situation where even with a limited budget, a limited finances, you can still make credit banking. And, and look, if it works like this, what if you have a house? We'll see. I think that'll probably be the next thing. Now they can buy a house. Well, now they can, but I'm saying, like, look how it works on the small level. Imagine two income family with a house, two cars, uh, multiple credit cards, uh, two different student loans, uh, having to pay for maybe the, the kids going to college or something. How can we make all that work? I mean, if it works, if it works on the small scale, just imagine how amazing it's going to work on the larger scale. Well, folks, uh, we have gone over our allotted time. I want to thank you for uh, staying with us an extra 15 minutes, but uh, it was, I hope, worth it. I hope that you got some value out of this. If there was anything that you felt like, man, this impacted my life, this was good, I, I, really, I really feel like I learned something, make sure you like and subscribe, uh, hit the notification, because see, when you do those things, right, everybody's, you watch a YouTube video, everybody's always asking for that. But what you do is you provide legitimacy to the content that's being presented. Because a lot of people don't want to waste their time on videos that aren't important, right? But if there's real value here and you think not only you, but somebody else could benefit from it, when you do those actions, you click like, you click subscribe, you ring the bell, all those different things, that tells YouTube, wow. And then let's say you comment or you share, you do those things. Then what YouTube does is they, they make this video available to more people. More people can see it and we can change more lives. And that's really what we're trying to do here because a rising tide raises all boats. 
you know, I am super excited. Now, some people are like, that was awesome. I want to, how can I participate in that? Well, I'm glad you asked. How can you participate in that? Well, you go to wiseguysandties.com forward slash credit hyphen banking. Let me blow that up for you. Wiseguysandties.com forward slash credit hyphen banking. And you will be a participant on our Tuesday night webinars, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time. All you need to do is put in your first name, your email, and your phone number. And you have to check mark the four boxes, right? Because you have to hold us harmless because you're going to do the, you're going to learn these strategies. But then it's really up to you to make sure that any strategy that you implement from a YouTube video, right, has, that you checked with uh, a competent uh, professional, a CPA or, a, a, or an accountant, and make sure that you read the fine print. Uh, if you, these are the things that you, you must do, right? Now, if you want to participate in the mastermind and have us go over your numbers or you want us to do some one-on-one -on -one, uh, with you, because anybody can get a free 30-minute consultation with us, and we can go over your numbers, right? Well, you just scroll down on the form, and you can see where you can go ahead and put, fill in all your information. The information that we were just sharing with you came from somebody who filled out the form. It's that simple. And we leave all of your identifying information off because uh, we, you know, we want to protect your privacy. We don't keep this information. We don't sell this information. This information is just for us to communicate to you. And we do not contact you unless you ask us to contact you. That's the beauty of this. This is designed to be total value to you so that you can uh, be, have this as a blessing. All right. So, folks, I want to thank you so much for being here uh, tonight. Look, people are feeling that the economic times are hard. They're feeling pinched. They're feeling squeezed. Some people have been uh, downsized, right-sized, homogenized. I mean, people just feel like everything is going sideways. And I just want to let you know that we're right there with you. We're all in this together. But the thing, that, uh, the thing that's going to separate us, you out there and us here, is that we have the map. We have the strategy. We have the plan to get out of here. See, we're not going to wait for people in Washington, D.C. to come solve our problems because that's a long wait for a train that's never going to show. What we're going to do and what we are doing is we're creating our own economy. We're creating an economy that we can control. And when we do that, we're going to have the confidence to move forward in pursuit of our dreams. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. That's what we really want to help extend to each and every one of you that are out there. All right, so if that's you and you're thinking to yourself, man, this is where I want to be. This is what I need. I need to get that business strategy. How do I create the business HELOC with my personal finances? How do I get business credit and, and combine that with credit banking? You need to contact the wise guys in ties, right? So call us or go to our website and schedule a free consultation. If you're in the uh, YouTube or you're in a uh, webinar, Ray has put uh, contact information for you to reach us there as well. So, folks, uh, on behalf of myself, Joseph Smith, this is my business partner, Mr. Ray Fleming. Good night, everybody. Good night. God bless. We have a brand new 